Well, hello, sixth graders. We are on page 739 in the math book. As we continue to work our way through this data collecting and statistics and measurement of data, <clears throat> ways to interpret data, lesson 13.6 talks about applying measures of center and then how that can show certain variabilities. How does it vary? How does one set of data vary from another set of data? Uh, you know, and again, this stuff is when you're seeing it for the first time, it can really kind of confuse you. But when we're talking about measures of center, how do we measure the center of a set of data? Well, we either do it by finding the mean or finding the median. That gives us a reference to the center of a set of data. On 739, the first problem there is talking about a couple of sports teams and they're looking at the average height of baseball players and basketball players. And the data that they give you is the median. The median of the baseball players is 70 inches. So baseball is 70 inches and basketball is 78 inches. That's the median. Okay, it's not the average, it's the median. It's that number that's right smack in the middle of whatever their data set was. We don't get to see the set of data points here. We just get to get the results of what they've determined. It also goes on to say that there's an interquartile range the interquartile range is six inches for the baseball players and it's four inches for the basketball players. Now you remember interquartile range when you build a box plot and you figure out what the inner quartile, the upper and lower inner quartile ranges, the range between the lower and uh, the difference of the lower and the higher number there gives you the inner quartile range. And that's uh, a pretty critical piece of information when you're comparing something. Now, <clears throat> looking at this data it says, the median of the baseball player's height, the median of the baseball player's height is 8 inches, or 8, what is it measured in? Inches. 8 inches less than the basketball players. And so when you look at that, you can pretty much infer that basketball players, by and large, are typically taller than baseball players. But don't get misled. Because there could be a baseball player who happens to be a tall baseball player. So it doesn't necessarily mean that all basketball players are taller than baseball players. It just means, on average, basketball players are typically taller than baseball players. The interquartile range of the baseball team, this range is greater for the baseball than it is for the basketball. So the interquartile range for the baseball team is six, but it's only four for the basketball team. And what this tells you in just a glancing evaluation of the range is that most of the basketball players, because the range of different heights within a basketball team is much less, they're mostly all about the same height than for the baseball players. Baseball players, that has a wider range of heights, so that means there's some short ones, there's some tall ones, and a bunch of people in between. So you can look at those two center points 
the median, and we can determine that the basketball players are taller than the baseball players, but their heights typically are closer to the same than the baseball teams, which has a wider interquartile range. Let's go on to 740. And here we have another problem. Let's take a look at this. We get a data set for Kamira and Joey. And what it is, uh, they sold t-shirts during lunch to raise money for charity. And in the table, it tells you how many each sold each day for two weeks. Find the mean and the range of each data set. Okay, so looking at those numbers, you have to arrange them in order from the least to the greatest. And for Camara, the least amount of shirts sold was one. And the greatest amount of shirts sold was five. So Kamira's range is going to be five minus one. That's how you determine the range. So her range is four. But if you look at Joey, the least amount he sold on any given day was zero. Didn't sell any on some days. And then on one day, as luck would have it, he sold 13. So his range is going to be 13 minus 0, which is 13. So the range for Camara is 4, and the range for Joey is 13. But, again, those numbers can be misleading. And the reason I say that is when you look at Joey's data there, on that day he got lucky and sold 13 of those, 13 would be considered an outlier. It's so far away from the rest of the normal amount of t-shirts that he sold that it will skew that data and give you a false understanding of it. And that's, that's really what we're trying to do when we look at this data, is try and make some sense of what it really means. Now, I know you all have heard at different times that, you know, don't trust what someone's telling you because, you know, they can fudge the numbers to say whatever they want to say. Don't trust the data unless you know what the data means. And we see, we're seeing data all the time on TV. We're, we're seeing uh, percentiles, we're seeing median ages, and, you know, what does this stuff mean? Well, if you understand this, then you understand what that is representing, and then you can put it into a perspective that makes sense to you. So what we're doing with this also is finding the mean. You know what the mean is? The mean is the average. Add all the numbers together, divide it by the amount of numbers there are, and it gives you the mean. Interestingly enough, the range 4 and 13 are vastly different, but the mean, the average, comes out the same. They both have an average of 3. So on any given day, they're going to sell 3 t-shirts on average. One day they'll sell 2, another day they'll sell 4, it averages out to 3. So, when you compare this data, the mean of Joey's sales, the average, on average, they both sold the same amount of t-shirts on any given day. And the range of Joey's is obviously greater, because, boom, he had that one day where he sold 13. So the typical number of shirts Joey sold each day was the same, the typical number of Camara, as Camara sold. However, since the range of Joey's data was greater than Camara's, the number of t-shirts Joey sold varied more. And if you look at the numbers, you can see that. Camara, she was pretty consistent with how many shirts she sold every day. But Joey, 
He was pretty consistent, except for that one day where number 13 come flying in from out of nowhere. So it skewed the data. On average, they both sold the same amount. So Joey has nothing to brag about other than the fact that on one day, he really sold a lot of t-shirts. Let's go to number seven on 742. I like these kind of problems because they make you think, you know, and it's called 737. Where is that at? Or I'm sorry, 742. Number seven on 742. Think smarter, sense or nonsense. In other words, you got to figure out if this problem makes sense or if it's one of those deals where you, 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 you know it's going to be wrong. So what do we got? We've got Yashi made the box plots that you see at the right to show the data he collected. And the data was on plant growth. He thinks that the variation in bean plant growth was about the same as the variation in tomato plant growth. In other words, he's saying that they both grew at about the same rate. Does Yashi's conclusion make sense? Why or why not? Well, if you look at the box plots, and here's a little secret, guys and girls. If you look at the box plot, if it's a small range between the inner quartile range, then the height of those plants are about the same. But if it's a bigger inner quartile range, then you got some short ones, you got some really tall ones, you got some that are about average, but you've got greater variation. So it's more likely that the bean plants will have less variation than the tomato plants. So his conclusion, he thinks that the variation in the bean plant was about the same as the variation in tomato plant, that would be incorrect because the bean plants definitely have a much more consistent height because that inner quartile range is much less, much smaller than the tomato plants. Okay. Anyhow, your homework is 743 and 744. And let's just pick one of the word problems. I like to pick a word problem because you always get confused by words. Number three on page 743. Let's see what this problem's all about. Mrs. Mack measured the height of her students in two classes. So we're measuring height, how tall the kids are. Class one has a median height of 130 centimeters. Let's change our chart here. So class number one has a median height of, gosh, I just read it, 130 centimeters. Remember, we always got to pay attention to the unit of measure. And it has an inner quartile range of 5 centimeters. Okay. Class 2 has a median height of 134 centimeters. And what it's in... Her quartile range is 8. So, this is number 1, this is number 2, and let me just give you a visual here. The blue dots are number 1, and the outside of this 
would be number two. Number two has a bigger interquartile range, a greater distance than number one. So now we've got some basic information that we can draw some conclusions. What's the problem asking us to do? Write a statement that compares the data. Not only do you got to figure this out, you got to write about it too. Sorry, don't mean to be pushing the limits here. So the first thing we can come up with is class number two, looking at the difference in the median height, the middle height of the kids in that classroom, we can assume that classroom number two, the kids are taller doesn't necessarily mean there isn't somebody in class number one who's taller than somebody in class number two, but based on that median, we can assume that most of the kids in class two are taller than the kids in class one. The other conclusion that you can draw is that because it has, class two has a wider interquartile range, that means class two has some short people, some really tall people, and a whole lot of people in between. So it has a greater range of different heights. Whereas in class one, eh, they don't vary too much in height. They're all pretty much about the same height. So that's what this unit, this lesson was all about, is looking at those numbers and being able to come to a conclusion so that that data makes some kind of sense to you. That's it for today. Keep up the good work. We're almost done for the year. Meanwhile, stay safe, stay out of trouble, and be kind to people. We'll talk to you later.